curious about something today. Have you ever wondered the history of chewing gum? How it is made? And who are the first ones to discover it? Well, if you want to, let me first introduce myself. I'm Jafar, and let's go to the world of chewing gum! Double good pleasures, double your fun with double good, double good, double good fun. And now, a page from our Sunday morning almanac. April 1st, 1891, 121 years ago today. A no nonsense birthday for an iconic American brand. For it was on that day in Chicago that William Wrigley Jr. founded the company that bears his name. Wrigley started out making soap and baking powder, but he switched to the manufacture of chewing gum, which soon became his principal business. In 1921, he opened his new headquarters, the Wrigley Building, a wedding cake skyscraper of a building in a prime spot on Michigan Avenue. North American Indians chewed the sap from spruce trees. The first commercial chewing gum was made and sold in 1848 by John Bacon Curtis. He called his chewing gum the state of Maine pure spruce gum. John B. Curtis and his brother came up with a practical idea of how to make and sell spruce gum as a chewing gum. They experimented with spruce tree raisin and made a sticky, rubbery material which could be chewed. Then they added flavor to the gum and paraffin for a soft and rubbery feel. The name of John's factory was Curtis Chewing Gum Factory. On July 27, 1869, Amos Tyler received the first patent in the United States for chewing gum. However, Tyler never sold his gum commercially. An Ohio dentist, William Finley Semple, was honored for his work using the first patent to manufacture chewing gum from December 1869. Main ingredients in Sample's gum formula were charcoal and chalk. While in 1869, Mexican General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana told his idea of chicle to Thomas Adams. Adams tried to make toys, masks, and rain boot out of chicle. But neither of his products were commercially successful. In 1869, he simply added flavor to the chicle. That was the first step for creating the world's first modern chewing gum. The first mass marketed chewing gum was called Adams New York Chewing Gum. In the 1870s, Adams and Sons sold sour orange flavored gum as an after dinner candy in 1871. Thomas Adams patented a machine for the manufacture of gum. That year, Adams created a licorice flavored gum called Blackjack. However, all of the, these gums had one big problem. They could not hold flavor. Problem with holding flavor was not fixed until 1880. When William White combined sugar and corpse syrup with chicle, for better taste, he added peppermint extract. He found out that peppermint stayed in the gum during chewing for much longer than other flavors. He called his first peppermint flavored gum Yucatan gum. Dr. Edward Beeman tried to solve problem by adding pepsin powder and he invented gum that was supposed to serve as a digestive aid. That was the next big discovery in the world of chewing gums. This type of gum is still available today. In 1888, Thomas Adams Chewing Gum Tutti Frutti was the first chewing gum that was sold from a vending machine. The very first chewing gum vending machine was located in one of the New York City subway station. In 1891, William Wrigley Jr founded Wrigley Chewing Gum. Existing companies offered similar products that were much more popular than gums from Wrigley's. 
One day in 1892, Mr. Wrigley got the idea of offering two packages of chewing gum, which each can off baking powder. This offer was a huge success. His first two brands were Lotta and Besser. Juicy Fruit Gum came next in 1893. And Wrigley's Spearmint was introduced later that same year. By the early 90s, with all aspects of manufacturing, packaging and marketing, modern chewing gum was well on its way to its current popularity. Gum with chicle soon got favor of spruce gum and pafferin gum, and it held flavors longer and better. In 1914, William Wrigley and Henry Flair added mint and fruit extracts to a chewing gum with chicle. This is how Wrigley's Double Mint, popular brand, was created. The Wrigley company was rapidly becoming an international success. Wrigley brands became known the world ever. The first factories were established in the United States and soon, Wrigley's Double Mint factories were established in Canada in 1910 in Australia in 1915, in Great Britain in 1927, and New Zealand in 1939. In 1928, an accountant for the Flair Gum Company, Walter Damer, attempted to make a new rubber product, but he accidentally found a bubble gum that was not sticky. He called it Double Bubble. Double Bubble, this gum, was based on original Frank Flair formula. In 1951, the Topps company reinvented the popularity of bubblegum by adding baseball cards to a package, replacing their previous gift of a single cigarette. Children and parents love this. In the 1950s, as consumers became more health conscious, sugarless gum was introduced. The original idea behind sugar-free gum belongs to a dentist, Dr. Petrolis. Those dentists approved chewing gums containing the ammonia. This substance counteracted acid that lead to tooth decay. Dr. Petrolis sold his company to the William Wrigley Corporation. In the late 1960s, they introduced the first sugar-free bubble gum called Blamo. As the time passed, many experiments were carried out to obtain different types and flavored of gums. Today, there are hundreds of gums flavor from classic vanilla to the coke flavor. There are many types of gums available in market from gums used for medical purpose to the gums that color our teeth. Gums are today made from many different ingredients like experiments were carried out to obtain different types and flavor of gums. Today, there are hundreds of gum flavor from classic vanilla to the coke flavor. There are many types of gums available in market from gums used for medical purposes to the gums that color our teeth. Gums are today made from many different ingredients like pepsin, guarantee, nicotine, ETC. People enjoy chewing gums. William Wrigley Perhaps one of the most famous names in the gum industry is William Wrigley. Wrigley was the son of a soap salesman from Philadelphia, and at the age of 13, he was also selling soap. At the age of 30, he moved to Chicago to open a new branch of his father's company and came up with an idea to provide premiums to vendors who purchase a certain amount of soap. These premiums included baking powder, cookbooks, and umbrellas. The baking powder sales surpassed the popularity of soap. So, Wrigley made that his primary product and offered gum as a premium, the very same development from John Curtis. Once again, the premium's popularity surpassed that of the product and Wrigley entered the gum industry. Wrigley hired the Zero Gum Company to manufacture gum for him. And it was here 
that the regular industry started. He introduced a series of branded gums in 1983, including Juicy Fruit and Spearmint. In 1898, he founded William Wrigley Jr. Company. While this type of industry making is nothing new or special. What set Wrigley apart from his competitors, including the Adams Company, was his marketing and advertising. Wrigley is famously quoted as saying, Anyone can make gum. The trick is to sell it. And sell it he did. Wrigley began by doing a modest advertising campaign in 1906 in Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse. With successful results, the campaign then evolved to massive billboards, black cars and street cars and subways, and one of the first electric signs, including a massive one in a Times Square. Electricity bill, of which was an annual $100,000. The billboards then evolved to a link line of 117 signs along the railroad between Atlantic City and Trenton, New Jersey, advertising Wrigley Spearmint between 1915 and 1917. Wrigley sent free samples of gum to everyone at the telephone book, a total of more than 8.5 million and in another campaign, every child received two sticks of gum when they turned two, reaching 750,000 children. A brand recognition study in the 1920s found that 65% of people listed Wrigley's as their top of mind choice for chewing gum, while the nearest competitor scored only 10%. Wrigley's advertising campaigns were what truly made gum popular throughout the country and a billion dollar industry. For the advertisements and images that Wrigley and other marketers use, see the advertisement section from the above.